Dublin, how has it been for a family destination? It's terrific. We've only been here about a day and a half. We have a few more days left, but we've had a really good time. Um, everybody has been extremely friendly, and that's the thing we've noticed the most. I would say the food is more expensive than I imagined. Um, even at a small pub with very few seats, it'll be 30 euro for a 10 ounce steak. But other than that, I don't think anything else is out of the ordinary and we travel quite a bit. We've got something like eight euros for a, a pint in a, in a bar. So it's like, I, I thought I misheard at first, but uh, unfortunately no I heard correctly and we did get stung. So maybe our fault for going on the tourist uh, trail, but uh, overall though, but size that, mostly good. We were warned about the price several times. Um, yeah, we've had some friends who have said it, it is expensive. Like, yeah, like you said, it's cheap to come over, but then you need lots of spending money. So, yeah, we, we didn't we put it off, but we were told that it's expensive over here. What, what do you think of the Guinness Storehouse, then? That we do not regret. We're happy to be here. Tree wheels, whole wheel barrow, two streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and muscles alive, alive, oh. Back on the bus, a trip to the Phoenix Park, and a chance to talk about whether Dublin has received a hard rap from Mumsnet users. As far as I'm concerned, whoever said that about Ireland, tell them, on your bike. But the Mumsnet users were not convinced by the city's offering. One writing, it's not that Dublin is horrible, it's just that cities with history and beautiful museums are ten a penny. On the other side of the city, one of Dublin's newest museums is trying to differentiate itself, conscious of the modern tourist. People, I think, are very much ruled by their phones. A lot of people are very much ruled by the phones. What can I take photos of? What's Instagram friendly? What uh, looks great for family photographs? What will the children enjoy as well as what will I enjoy? What will we all get out of this as a family that we can talk about over dinner? I think tourists will very much look firstly at their budgets and will look at what something costs before they make the decision. I often see people upstairs checking out their phones, seeing the cost of the museum and then going on to TripAdvisor or online to see what other people are saying about this place and making the decision about that. One of the things we've appreciated is that most experiences like this one at the museum are pretty authentic. It's not like superficial Disney-like where like you're paying to just kind of see some manufactured thing, but it's actually a lot of rich culture and rich experiences, which is what we personally like. So they said Dublin is wet, they said Dublin is miserable, and they said don't go to Temple Bar. Except Mankey, Monday night in November, and this place still has plenty of tourists. Mm. Why here, <laughs> this place? Uh, because the Temple Bar is really famous for uh, beer. <laughs> it's really fun for the kids. She's having a great time, and you know, everywhere we go, they're they're really nice to the kids, and everybody's really, really nice and helpful. Somebody actually told us to come. Somebody at the Guinness place told, told us we to come down to Temple Bar area and try to get something to eat. So a day on the tourist trail in Dublin leaves us with little sense of the mum's net criticism. But could negative online commentary end up leaving Dublin in the halfpenny place? Louise Byrne and Connor Wilson reporting. I'm joined now in studio by travel journalist Owen Curry and by Graham McQueen of Dublin Chamber. Owen, um, the tourists that Louise and Connor met seem to be pretty happy. In stark contrast to the users of Mumsnet, uh, uninspiring, nothing special about it, dreary and expensive, ugly, dirty, unfriendly locals, lacking the usual kind of tourist draws you expect from a capital city. Is that criticism justified? Um, all true. It, uh, if you hit the wrong uh, people, if you come across the wrong experience, tourism is a very personal experience. Uh, you can come into the most amazing city and just two or three things can really, really turn you off. Uh, we do have uh, this grey weather, but in the peer group that we're in, uh, you've got to expect that uh, everybody in those dark, dreary months of winter are going to have similar weather. So what do you do? You differentiate yourself. We don't have uh, the Louvre or the Vatican or the Tate Modern. We differentiate ourselves um, by a pretty traditional product. We've 1,000 centres for the performance arts across the city, which are our public houses. And that um, is a double-edged sword. It's the sort of thing that brings people in. We saw them complaining about the price of drink, but they're all going to those overcrowded pubs in Temple Bar. It also creates a problem uh, when you're 
you're trying to bit of make a bit of noise for the outdoors product or for the family product that the pub culture of Dublin tourism is so dominant. Okay. Uh, Graham. I know Dublin Chamber did some research about what our image is like abroad and it was a bit more positive than Mums Net in fairness. Yeah, so we did two surveys in the summer. The first one was with five and a half thousand people living overseas, ten countries abroad. The picture there was that people thought very highly of Dublin. The reputation is very high. We tallied that up with a survey of a thousand internationals living here in Dublin. We asked them what the experience was like once you move here, once you live here. And some of the problems that we all know about in Dublin came through, some of them that were in the VT there. Um, you know, we asked them what words you would associate with Dublin. 93% of people associated expensive with Dublin. So that's obviously tallies with what we're seeing there. Other stuff that came through were bad commute, uh, cost of housing, cost of living, that all came through. There's good stuff as well that people see as historic and friendly and things like that. They did mention the weather. We are stuck with that. There's not much we can do about good it. Good job they weren't here today. Um, Owen, there was lots of complaints there about cost but on the other hand there's lots of museums and galleries that are actually free that in other cities you might have to pay to get into. We do quite well in that you know the the free attractions we've a pretty strong one a couple of them are up around 700,000 the National Gallery would be the highest of them interestingly enough um, the paid attractions tend to outrank them in terms of visitor numbers and um, the Guinness storehouses I mean it, the mention was made about it being a factory but there are only three uh, there are only two other brand attractions worldwide that get more numbers than Guinness uh, that's Hershey in Pennsylvania and Volkswagen in Germany um, it is the leading attraction and it does what it does quite well it's quite a, a lesson to other attractions in Dublin we do have a shortage of classy attractions that can attract more than about 400,000 visitors a year that's being addressed but slowly and there is that indoor what you do indoor with children um, a little bit happening but not enough actually to generate the sort of excitement internationally remember our peer group are also going to be uh, expensive who's our peer group um, we're a Scandinavian city essentially you know we are you know the Vikings, it's, we have the, the Vikings are still different as the Difflin Adventure Centre will explain um, we would be closer to London prices than Edinburgh prices so we would sort of people would look at other northern European cities we're not going to be uh, competing with Lisbon or southern European cities but where the way uh, uh, city breaks work there's a division one very clear division one which is London Paris and Rome and a very clear division two which is effectively Amsterdam Copenhagen Barcelona now that's where our price range is that's where we're seeing it and people who come and complain about the price they will complain about the price um, are compared Comparing us with cities that really are in a different, are doing a different sort of thing than what we're doing. And if you start um, messing with price or you have to start interfering with that supply demand market force uh, on price, it can end up going wrong fairly, uh, horribly wrong fairly quickly. We discovered that in the past. Uh, Graham, we saw Nicola McDonald of the Whiskey Museum there saying that numbers are down 2% this year and it's not a problem at the moment, but if it continues, it could be a problem for, for an attraction like that. Is there a danger of killing the golden goose? Well, look, you have to look, look at where we are at the moment. There's about 6 million people, visitors, coming to Dublin every year at the moment. If you go back to, say, 10 years ago, that was down around 3.5. So tourism does fluctuate. It does come and go. I think building on what Owen is saying there, it's very important that we don't become complacent about the tourism product. We've got to make sure that, one, it's affordable, two, that it's attractive. When we get people here, we've got to make sure they have a good experience because what we know is that people go home, they tell their friends, they tell their family what was Dublin like. If they say it's too expensive, if they say it's some of the things we heard, the mums net people saying there, if that is really true, that will resonate with people, that message will get back and they'll stop coming. That's not what we want in Dublin. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you very much thank indeed you, for joining us. Hope, hopefully the weather will, uh, will improve anyway. Miriam.